Good morning, I'm uh, Ron Galperin, uh, Chair of the uh, Commission on Revenue Efficiency, and uh, actually good afternoon, rather. And uh, I'm here also with uh, fellow Commissioner uh, David Farrar. And uh, if you could walk us through uh, where you think things are in terms of uh, the report and its implementation, that would be wonderful. Ah, well, I would love to uh, spend a lot of time uh, discussing the implementation, but so far, uh, at least as we see it, quite frankly, there hasn't been a great deal of implementation of this. Um, October the 1st was the date that this report was issued, and uh, it's now about four and a half months. Uh, and it's my understanding that the, there are a number of things that are being done uh, at the Office of Finance uh, to, uh, to respond to uh, some of the previous uh, requests by this, um, uh, by this committee, uh, but we have 65 recommendations and we've actually got a, uh, a matrix uh, on the back, which is our um, uh, recommendations tracker, uh, just for your reference. It is uh, Appendix uh, 15. Uh, we're planning to uh, issue in the very near future a, a report about what the uh, progress uh, of all of these uh, recommendations are. And there are not a lot of uh, boxes, I'm afraid, that we're going to be checking. Uh, there are uh, also references to um, uh, those that at least we determined were responsible for a variety of, this, uh, a variety of different recommendations, uh, be they um, uh, things that would fall under the uh, purview of council or city attorney or mayor's office or office of finance, ITA, et cetera. Some of them, of course, are overlapping. And where that's the case, we make a note of that as well. So w which of these uh, are, are you aware of, of uh, steps having been taken? Uh, well, it, there, there are ongoing steps that are being taken in terms of uh, uh, the uh, technological aspect of this and the, uh, the rollout of the new uh, FMS system, uh, although it should be noted that um, that in and of itself is not a panacea. That's going to help, uh, but it's not going to happen overnight, and it's uh, at first going to apply uh, to only certain kinds of receivables and uh, for summary reporting thereof. It is a process, and we are, we are cognizant of that. Um, there also uh, is currently um, uh, underway uh, an amnesty and settlements program, which the Office of Finance, I'm sure, can uh, talk to in, in greater uh, detail. Uh, so we're pleased that that is happening. Um, but uh, there are a whole variety of other recommendations. And, and again, we are cognizant that these don't happen all overnight. but um, we're still awaiting for them to happen. Uh, I don't know whether it would be helpful to, uh, to take a few moments uh, to, um, uh, we, had, we had done a, a brief presentation uh, previously, uh, generally, but just to kind of walk, uh, walk you and the committee and, 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 uh, and those present uh, through, the, um, through the report itself and, uh, uh, and how we bunched our variety of 65 recommendations. Because we're, we're aware that 65 is a little bit uh, uh, much to digest all at one time. But they do fall into a variety of different categories. I think that would be great if you would do that. Uh, would be happy to. Um, so it, the, uh, just to, if you've got a copy of it in front of you. And, and there are also some additional copies that have been brought by uh, Mr. Deering. So uh, any others who are present who would like a copy, hopefully we've got some that can be distributed. Um, uh, we've, we went through, um, if, if you look at, um, I'll start in the beginning, which I guess is a good place to start. There's an executive summary, of course, uh, our table of contents, and then we move beyond that, and we look at, uh, at what some of the numbers are, and we've all discussed what some of those are in terms of the amounts of receivables that are uh, non-tax receivables that are past due, and a staggering amount of them that are 120 days past due, and uh, 42.5% more than two years past due, although, as we all know, a lot of those numbers at this point are phantom. They are not collectible, but it's a question of how do we move forward uh, from this point on. Um, if you turn to uh, uh, page 8, what we go through is a, a thorough analysis of all of the uh, city department's uh, non-tax receivables, uh, as well as the tax receivables, uh, and talk about how much money is at stake, because that's sort of the bottom line of how much everybody wants to know when, when can we see this money and how much of it are we going to see. Um, needless to say, for those severely delinquent receivables, we're not going to get a lot, but it's about changing the process. And uh, our estimate, and it's a bit of a ballpark, was that we could see an additional uh, 10 to 25 
million annually uh, in the next fiscal year and for the next several fiscal years. Uh, and that's just from the non-tax receivables. You add to that some of the others and move forward maybe three, four years into the future and you can be talking about $100 million or more. Um, just to also address something that's not in this report that we've looked into most recently, uh, that would be parking occupancy tax. We have found that to be a, a really ripe for, uh, uh, for uh, doing some reforms to that. It, and we see that now as very much low-hanging fruit. Um, and the estimates are that we, we may be shortchanged anywhere between 20 to 40 and perhaps even as much as $50 million a year. And there's a lot are of money going to have, get uh, out of that written suggestions on that? Yeah, we are actually in the process of, of putting together our, uh, uh, our next phase of, of reporting, and that's uh, going to, um, to focus on that parking uh, occupancy uh, tax. But what we're also doing is, uh, uh, as we are finishing that draft, we're going to distribute it to the various parties that have something to do with it and kind of get their feedback on it uh, uh, and make sure that whatever recommendations we make are, are uh, most feasible and viable. Um, turning to page 12 of this, we, we go through the best practices. We looked at cities like Dallas, Houston, Chicago, San Francisco. Um, and then we also, uh, to jump ahead to page 16, we looked at the various parties um, who have some role when it comes to collections. The Office of Finance, the Mayor, the Controller, City Attorney, uh, uh, the roles that the CAO, the Treasurer play, et cetera. Um, what we continuously find to be a problem is with whom does the buck stop? Uh, and it's much too easy for everybody to, uh, to point fingers at everybody else and to not take responsibility for uh, not just collections, but it's what happens before collections. It's, it's about thinking creatively about generating revenue. It's about uh, billing. Uh, it's about uh, doing all the things that you need to do so that it doesn't end up in collections. Um, we, of course, go through the Messias study as well. And that's on page uh, 20, and um, also the uh, FMS system. Uh, and there's still, I think, some, at least in my, my feeling, uh, as much as I've delved into this, a little bit lack of clarity about exactly what we're going to get out of it and exactly what is needed to make it as, um, as useful as I believe that it can be. Um, so. We, we begin our recommendations uh, around those issues uh, in terms of follow-ups to the Messia study, which is our first recommendation. Uh, and we really want to see something more akin to a centralized payment portal, which we think can make a big difference for the city, and a customer uh, ID system that's going to be citywide so that there would be an actual ID number that is attached to anybody who does business in one way or the other with the city. Uh, again, we know that doesn't happen tomorrow, but that's where we ought to be working toward. Um, turning to page 24, this is about more clear and centralized authority. And um, uh, what we found, and, and we've discussed this previously, was that finance has often found itself, and they can of course comment on this uh, uh, more in depth, uh, have found themselves to often be asking departments to please comply, to, uh, uh, to please do X, Y, or Z. Uh, and you wonder where the teeth is. And so it's, it's vital as we see it for finances instructions to be treated as mayoral directives. And quite frankly, for the mayoral directives that have been issued previously, including executive directive number five, which had seven very specific things that were supposed to be done by departments, and which we found to, uh, in fact, not be followed through on, that there be consequences for that to, hap to happen. Um, Number seven is about adequate staffing for the Office of Finance. We know that, that uh, uh, furloughs, uh, retirements have taken a toll on all of the city. Um, but we have to look, uh, at least as, as our commission sees it, very carefully at what are those positions that actually generate revenue for the city. Uh, Office of Finance positions when it comes to collections uh, are, I think, at the top of that list. And we need those people to be uh, spending as much time as possible collecting. Um, there's also a revenue uh, collection review task force. That's number eight. Um, I have personally attended um, one of those meetings. And um, uh, there was a motion that was put forward uh, uh, by um, 
uh, Councilmember Parks also uh, related to that task force and strengthening it and perhaps Office of Finance can give us a, an update on what is happening with that as well as with the Revenue Management Committee. Um, to turn to page 28 and, and uh, stop me if you have any, uh, any specific questions about any of this, but I'm just going to try to run through this very, very quickly. In terms of quarterly uh, reports of departments' compliance, um, and, and we believe that this is absolutely vital because if you, if you, don't, uh, uh, if you don't inspect, you can't expect anything. And uh, it's about compliance of those departments with the collection guidelines, uh, their performance, uh, the uh, progress they're making at cultivating new revenues. Um, and we also believe that it's vital to track the recommendations that CORE has made and that have been made previously by the controller in audits of collections. We have in one of our appendices a, a cross-reference of uh, the um, uh, recommendations of the controller and our own so that, uh, so that we can show how they uh, uh, dovetail each other. But if nobody is following up on a regular basis, then it falls through the cracks. And that, unfortunately, is what we see with a lot of things, and we're seeing it here. Um, we want to see department managers attest to their compliance to all of the uh, collections um, uh, guidelines. That's number 12, which is on page uh, 29. Uh, and to have very specific performance guidelines for those general managers. Um, we looked at how do you give departments some skin in the game, because we believe this is an important part of the, the equation as well. Uh, we've looked at the LA County budgeting paradigm, which we think that there's a lot to be learned from, and, uh, and to borrow from that to create a, uh, a pilot program, as it were, where departments on some level can benefit from their performance when it comes to, uh, to collections. We're cognizant that you don't want to do that at the expense of, of undermining the general fund, uh, and you don't want to tie up money into uh, an umpteen number of little uh, pocketbooks, but, but that would be very helpful. Uh, and of course, employee recognition, because there are a lot of great things that city workers are doing, and there are a lot of great ideas that we keep getting from them, and uh, it helps to say thank you, at the very least, every now and then. Uh, Inspector General, which we've talked about before, and we can get into a, uh, uh, a little bit further, and, and uh, perhaps um, Commissioner Farrar wants to, uh, to talk about that, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, changing the uh, process flow and timetable. Um, again, uh, we looked at the, the current timetable that exists, and I'll, I'll uh, uh, refer you to appendix number four, and that is uh, the flow chart of how it exists right now which we believe has a lot of shortcomings, and so we actually created a brand new flow chart to show how we would like to change that. What page is that on this? That is on page, bear with me here a moment. Uh, the, uh, the current uh, flow chart is on page 72 as appendix four, and the proposed flow chart is appendix five, which is in the following page, which is uh, number 73. Um, I think you're looking at a copy that's actually black and white uh, copy, so you're at a little bit of a disadvantage because we color coded it. Uh, but uh, there is a there is a color coded version of it, which will hopefully make it uh, uh, a little bit uh, clear. Um, collection agencies, which we've talked tremendously about, there've been a lot of uh, um, discussion about this in the council as well. It's finally beginning to happen that some things are going to secondary collections, although a little bit too slow for our taste. And we have to also re remember that secondary collections are much tougher than primary ones and that you've got to really provide an enhanced incentive for those, um, uh, for those collection companies. Because if they get paid the same kind of percentage or the same numbers as in the, the primary collections, you're not going to get a great deal of, of, uh, of uh, um, performance out of them. And so we, we go through selection criteria and uh, all the various specific kind of contract provisions, in fact, that we would like to see in collection agency contracts uh, in order to really uh, make sure that they are as effective for the city as possible. Everything from performance guarantees and performance bonds, various benchmarks, preferences for local employment, um, incentives to aggressively work the back end of accounts, et cetera, and that's on page 38. Um, Sale of debt, this is, we've been talking about this for a very long time. 
there's a lot of very aging receivables that continue to be on our books. Uh, they sit there for a long time until finally